They were stronger, had bigger brains, and ruled Europe for 300,000 years. So why did the Neanderthals disappear almost as soon as we arrived? The answer might be an invisible killer we brought with us from Africa. For hundreds of thousands of years, the Neanderthals were the masters of Ice Age Eurasia. They were a successful and highly intelligent species of human, superbly adapted to the cold, harsh environments they called home. They were skilled hunters, crafted sophisticated tools, cared for their sick and elderly, and likely buried their dead. They were, for a very long time, the dominant form of humanity on the planet. And then, they vanished. Around 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals disappeared from the fossil record just a few thousand years after the arrival of a new, lankier species of human migrating out of Africa, our own ancestors, Homo sapiens. The stakes of this mystery are deeply personal. Neanderthals are our closest extinct relatives. Understanding why they disappeared is to ask a fundamental question about our own success. Did we win because we were smarter, better, or simply luckier? The air of the Ice Age world they inhabited was cold and sharp, filled with the scents of pine forests and the megafauna they hunted. Their existence was a testament to resilience in the face of a challenging world. Why did this long and successful chapter of human history come to such an abrupt end? For a long time, the simplest explanation seemed the most likely, climate change. The period of their disappearance coincided with a series of extreme and rapid climate fluctuations. Perhaps the Neanderthals, who were adapted to a stable, cold environment, were simply unable to cope with the increasingly unstable weather that disrupted their traditional hunting grounds and food sources. While climate certainly played a role as a contributing stressor, this theory has a major weakness. Neanderthals had successfully survived numerous climate shifts and brutal ice ages before. It seems unlikely that this time alone would have been enough to wipe them out completely. This leads to the second, more compelling and more confrontational theory, competition with us. When anatomically modern humans arrived in Europe, they brought with them a suite of cultural and technological advantages. The archaeological record shows that Homo sapiens had more sophisticated tools, including a wider variety of specialized stone blades, bone needles for sewing tailored clothing, and long-distance projectile weapons like the spear thrower or atladle. The feeling of comparing their toolkits is like comparing a simple hand axe to a multi-tool. Neanderthal technology was effective, but Homo sapiens technology was more diverse and efficient. Our ancestors also showed clear evidence of complex symbolic behavior, such as creating stunning cave art and personal ornaments. This suggests they had more complex social networks, which would have allowed them to trade resources and information over long distances. In a harsh Ice Age environment, this ability to maintain alliances and share knowledge would have been a massive survival advantage. The theory of competitive exclusion posits that even a small, persistent advantage in securing food and resources would have, over thousands of years, allowed the larger Homo sapiens population to slowly outcompete and replace their Neanderthal cousins. But a groundbreaking new theory suggests the most decisive weapon in this conflict may have been completely invisible. What if the deciding factor wasn't a war of tools or wits, but a war of germs? This novel hypothesis is known as the asymmetrical disease burden model. It was proposed by a team of researchers, including Geely Greenbaum from Stanford University. The model is based on a simple but powerful premise from epidemiology. When two long separated populations meet, they exchange pathogens. The population that has lived in a more disease-rich environment will have evolved immunities that the other population lacks. Imagine the situation 40,000 years ago. 
Modern humans had spent hundreds of thousands of years evolving in tropical Africa, a region with a huge diversity of pathogens. Neanderthals, on the other hand, had spent an equally long time adapting to the colder, less pathogen-rich environment of Eurasia. When modern humans began to migrate out of Africa, they would have brought a host of tropical diseases with them, illnesses to which they had some immunity, but to which the Neanderthals had none. The sensation of this encounter would not have been one of immediate violent conflict, but of a slow, creeping biological catastrophe for the Neanderthals. This would have created what the researchers call a disease frontier. For thousands of years, modern humans might have been unable to establish a permanent foothold in Europe because they were constantly being exposed to Neanderthal diseases to which they were naive. But critically, the disease burden would have been asymmetrical. Modern humans, coming from the tropics, would have carried a deadlier arsenal of pathogens. The result would have been devastating for the Neanderthals, much like the way smallpox and measles brought by Europeans decimated the indigenous populations of the Americas. The final answer to the Neanderthal extinction is likely a combination of all three factors. The increasingly unstable climate put their populations under stress. The arrival of culturally sophisticated modern humans created intense competition for dwindling resources. And finally, the invisible wave of new diseases may have been the knockout blow, weakening Neanderthal groups and giving our ancestors the decisive demographic advantage they needed to become the last human standing. The story of the Neanderthals is a tragic one. They were not brutish cavemen, but a successful and intelligent branch of the human family. Their extinction serves as a stark reminder that in the grand story of evolution, even 300,000 years of success is no guarantee of survival. If you find mysteries like this compelling, consider following as we continue to investigate the enigmas of the past.